What's going on YouTube? This is Necroskivo and it's time for a narrated Wi-Fi battle video. Now we have two more matches from the May International Challenge League of course, utilizing still that wonderful doubles team that uh, incorporates a few unconventional Pokemon. Pyroar and Gengar are still my best leads. Here we're going to see some annoying shenanigans from Prankster Klefki. And of course Aegislash can be annoying because it can run mixed sets so even burning it isn't a great way to deal with it. Now I figured his Aegislash would protect here because the Shadow Ball is pretty imminent. I could also hit it with a fire type attack. I was hoping he would just swagger but unfortunately he goes for Thunder Wave. Which is just, that's annoying because Gengar's utility is at speed. I am able to uh, get rid of Klefki immediately. Whenever I see Prankster Pokemon they kind of become my first uh, priority just because of how annoying they can be. Uh, a lot of people tend to sleep on Prankster Pokemon thinking that they, you know, they can play around the hacks or whatever. But I would just rather have it not come into play at all. Now I wanted to preserve my Pyroar's Focus Sash, so I switched out into Gudra, who would resist Greninja's general attacks and not take too much from Ice Beam. And of course, Aegislash wouldn't do too much to it either. Uh, since I am Thunder Waved, though, being paralyzed means I'm now slower than Aegislash, which is pretty amazing. And he's going to be able to finish me off with a Shadow Ball after breaking my um, Sash with the uh, with the Dark Pulse there. Not my Sash, my Substitute. But that's okay. I'm still going to have Pyroar with its Focus Sash intact. Uh, I'm able to take out Greninja with a Power Whip. That move is just showing its utility more and more on Gudra, handling Greninja, handling Rotom pretty well. Really, really like that move there. Now, Shadow Ball basically does a pitiable amount of damage to Gudra. Uh, unfortunately for me, I know that my opponent has a weakness policy just because of the way that he's playing his Aegislash. He's basically trying to get back into shield form to get hit while he has his higher defenses and then get the weakness policy off. I really wanted to burn him, uh, which is why I run will o -Wisp on Pyroar so that I can burn things when they're expecting to hit me with a Sucker Punch, Pyroar's pretty quick, or uh, or at the very least use King Shield. So I, I figured, let's go ahead and burn something. I decided to burn the Kangaskhan here because I felt fairly certain that I could handle the Aegis Slash between Pyroar and my remaining Pokemon in this match, Gigalith. Uh, I do end up activating the weakness policy on the Aegislash. Uh, I wanted to put it at a range where I could be sure that another hit would kill it from either Gigalith's Earthquake or Pyroar's um, Fire Blast. I was very fortunate not to miss a Fire Blast in this match, and so now it really is between uh, can I predict correctly on his um, moves. So here I knew I could have a free turn if I go ahead and protect and then go for Earthquake. He would need to double protect, or at the very least use a King Shield if he wanted to dodge it. And either way, I still could hit the Kangaskhan. Kangaskhan attempts to go for the power-up punch on Pyro, which is perfect because this is basically a free turn for me to get free damage on Kangaskhan. Uh, this is going to be very, very good for me, because now both of his Pokemon are in KO range for either of my Pokemon, whereas neither of his Pokemon can white KO Gigalith because of its sturdy ability. And of course, both of his Pokemon are burned, so physical attacks aren't going to do very much. Uh, we see just how little that super effective power-up punch does. And even if somehow my uh, Pyro went down, Kangaskhan doesn't really have a way to hurt Gigalith, so that match is going to be in the bag, and that was a pretty fun match. Now, we do have a double header today, so let's check it out. Now, in the second battle video, we are actually going to see more prankster shenanigans coming from Sableye. Uh, and actually in this battle I ended up over predicting a good bit. We see that my opponent's team is pretty fast with Garchomp, Weavile, and Manectric. Uh, of course Sableye has the Prankster ability so it's going to be able to avoid speed tiers almost entirely by using priority attacks. Really should have brought Escavalier this match. I was really afraid of bringing it because of um, he had two fire types on his team I believe and he also has Manectric who can use fire attacks. And so I really figured like it would be a liability. But he actually doesn't end up bringing any of his fire types, so if I had brought a Scavalier with Quick Guard, that would have made this battle a lot easier. Um, we are going to start off with these two yet again. 
I just wanted to protect and substitute up here to hopefully dodge some status, but I predict wrong. He decides to status Gengar first, obviously because Gengar is faster. And the Mega, ne Mega Manectric gets off a of Volt Switch on my Gengar, and even with that hefty HP investment, still does almost half of my HP. Uh, now it really is a battle against Hacks. Gengar is going to hit itself several times in this match, and he does end up missing the Swagger right there, which is nice. Um, I'm going to be able to hit Weavile with the Sludge Bomb, but it's not able to finish it off. And he hits Gengar with Night Slash to kill me. I had one match where Gengar hit itself in confusion like four times. And uh, here, I actually predicted Sableye to take a lot more from that Fire Blast than he did. So he must have a pretty hefty special defense investment right there. Which is a little unfortunate, but what can you do, right? Uh, so I am going to protect with my Pyroar. Now that I know he has Mega Manectric and Weavile, that means all of his Pokemon are faster than mine. So that means setting up Trick Room will not bite me in the butt too badly. Now I do end up protecting with Pyroar, trying to set up the Trick Room, but I hit myself in confusion again with Aroma Tise. Very annoying. Very, very, very annoying there. Uh, Sableye is also going to be able to get off a Recover. If I had not protected last turn, I would have had to deal with a Brick Break. But I have a Focus Sash, so maybe I should have just gone for that Fire Blast, it's hard to say. Here I just wanted to take out the Weavile. I really should have targeted down that Sableye. Um, I was really hoping that I would break through. Right there, I tried to just attack the Sableye with a Moon Blast, but I hit myself in confusion again. So um, I haven't really had an opportunity to hit the Sableye every time I try to target it. I've hit myself. So I'm just going to protect yet again. I wanted to try to set up the Trick Room just so that I can make sure I can outspeed the Manectric with my final Pokemon, which is Gudra. Uh, that Thunderbolt actually does a pretty good amount of damage, and I'm finally able to set up the Trick Room. Uh, and it's kind of a little bit too little too late here. I don't have enough HP to take another hit. Um, I, if I hit myself in my confusion, which I do, that means I'm going to die from burn. That's three times in one battle that I've hit myself in confusion. And there that foul play just does so little damage just because of me not having any attack investment and being a timid nature. I decided to hit the Sableye with the Fire Blast, hoping for a crit. I knew I wouldn't KO it, but I knew that Gudra could handle Mega Manetric very easily on its own. So Sableye was really the main thing I needed to take out there. But hitting myself in confusion so many times when I was just trying to go for Moonblast really made that difficult for me. So now Gudra can handle um, Mega Manectric on its own, but I really need to take out the Sableye and I'm unable to with the Stab Dragon Pulse. And that means he's just going to get to recover up on the next turn. And outside of just getting several crits in a row, I have no way to take out the Sableye. And so I, I was just looking at <laughs> the amount of work I'd have to do here. Really not worth it. Uh, I would need, I think, two crits in a row to take out the Sableye, which is just highly improbable. And between the burn damage and the chip damage he's doing with um, Hidden Power Ice right there, kind of difficult to work around. So that's, that's kind of the stuff you end up dealing with when you're playing against that type of play strategy there. But I actually ended up forfeiting the match just because I really really did not want to sit in there for 20 minutes or however long the battle timer is and just try to get critical hits when all he has to do is recover all the damage. Um, but, you know, sometimes you win those matches against the prankster strategies and sometimes you don't. So I hope you all enjoyed this battle and I will talk to you all soon. Alright, bye bye now.